So we've been looking at the sound system of English and of language in general. And uh, what I want to do today is to move us a little bit toward the domain of phonology. So moving from the domain of phonetics, the study of the articulatory mechanisms that are used to produce speech, and the science of the acoustic signal and the perception of sounds to the cognitive aspects that are involved in pronouncing sounds in the way that we do and in perceiving them in the way that we do given that the the speech stream includes a, an infinite variety of different exact sounds with, with per, the parameters constantly varying. And yet we're able to, from that speech stream, pick out parts of it that we count as segments. And those segments are the building blocks for words. So how is it that we do that? How is it that we categorize certain segments of the, of the of the acoustic signal as belonging to particular categories of sounds. So I'm going to start out by looking at the issue of categorization in general and how that works. And I'm going to begin with a look at some visual illusion phenomena because they tell us a lot about the nature of human perception and human cognition with respect to sensations that res are responses to physical stimuli. So let's start with let's start with this famous illusion from uh, an image that was an image of Edward. Edward Adelson that has to do with the colors on a checkerboard and how we perceive them in certain circumstances. So if we look at if we look at this um, instance of if we look at this instance of um, the checkerboard here that has two letters on it, each letter on a different square on the checkerboard. The question is are those the same colors? Do those two squares have the same color? And because it's an, it's an optical illusion, obviously you're going to say, yes, they have the same color. They are the same color. But nevertheless, we experience square A and square B as being different colors. So how is it that we do that? First of all, let's verify that they are the same color. So we'll uh, what I'm going to do is, what I did here was take the image, put it on a pure white background, and then lay across it pieces of white until such time as everything's gone but squares A and B. So there goes one piece, and then the rest go, and then it's still it, only at the end do we see that, in fact, squares <clears throat> A and B have are of the same color. So how is it that that happens? Well, what we do apparently is reconstruct a reality for the scene based on our knowledge of how things work in the world from what we know or based on what we know from our experience. So we know that checkerboards have a, a symmetrical pattern. Each square is the same size. They, they they contrast in terms of their color in a particular pattern, so that we're going to have light dark, light dark, all the way across in that pattern in each row, and each column is going to vary in the same way. So then, therefore, we assume that square A has to be the same color or a different color from square B because of that overall pattern. Moreover, even though we can see that square B is darker than the other light, 
the other light squares in the overall pattern, we know that that could be, or we believe that that could be because of the shadow that's cast by the cylinder that's sitting on the edge of the board where light is presumably coming from the right side. So what we do then is to reconstruct reality based on our knowledge of things that we know from our past experience or what we expect. We predict what should be there and see what we predict. Let's look uh, now at this um, really interesting, just a stretch of this really interesting uh, TED talk by Bo Lotto, who is a master of uh, visual illusions and who has a, a deep understanding of what the significance of, of all of this is.